Ice Spice shit real quick. I told y'all that Ice Spice was not signed to, um, what the fuck? This is so bright on my face. Pause. I told you that Ice Spice was not signed to Nicki Minaj. She's been signed to 10K Projects. I told you I got a deal there too. And it goes through Capital. And for anybody who thought that she was signed, she basically gave an explanation. Okay. Um, so from from what I know about her deal is that uh, she, she did something that was pretty good for her. When she first came in the game, she signed a distribution deal for that song, Munch. And it was through Create um, slash World Star. So World Star was the, like, I guess their idea was, hey, if we get this to go viral, they're hoping World Star could have gotten viral. They'll be lit. But it was only a distribution deal, which means, like, they were still a very much an independent artist. Later on, they start getting and fielding these deals of being um, actually on a label. And obviously, because they had leverage, they were probably thinking, we want to own our shit. Right. Usually independent labels more would would be down to sign that type of deal with you, because if you get on like a label like Atlantic, they're they're not going to want you to own your masters. You get what I mean? So you're probably going to sign with an indie label like 10K Projects. Um, this is a good look, because right now I keep telling you Atlantic. No, no. Capital is the new Atlantic. They got all the hot artists there. Everything is pumping through that machine. Young boys there, Kodak's there. Um, um, obviously, I Spice, Trippy, Migos, Lil Baby. Everybody's there. You know, um, they're like a hot label for like the young artists at the moment. So, yeah, Capital backs up 10K projects. They probably gave her a really good deal with with good upside. Like, probably fronted her like I don't know. I don't know. She probably could have signed for four or five million dollars, right? Or maybe I'm lowballing her. Who knows? Because shit, I think she's completely all recouped now. Like everything with her is going crazy. Um, she probably signed for something like that. Allows her to keep her masters. Um, they probably participate on the distribution, and I would think that maybe on the publishing they might get a small percentage. I don't know, but who knows? They might not get any at all. Uh, but that's all because of the leverage she had, you know, it's not about, I see some people in the comment section saying W manager. It's not about the manager. If you, if you're not as hot, you won't get that deal. Like you have to be as, you have to be as hot as you are to demand that deal. For example, 21 Savage, when he signed eventually to Epic, he owned his masters. Why? He dropped two mixtapes that were like platinum before. So shit, you, you are only, your negotiating power is only as good as, the um, what you already came in with. That's why for a lot of artists, if I could give any artist an advice here, what you want to do as you're coming up, you want to do distribution deals until you hit one. Now, here's the thing, though. A lot of people might not front you enough to uh, um, finance your career off just a distribution deal. That's why sometimes people sign um, like a full on record deal. And also the deal you're probably going to get Depends on when you need it the most and when also you you um you sign it. So, for example, that's why you realize with a lot of artists, a lot of artists start out, they're from some local town. They don't know nothing about labels and send third. Somebody from the local town who's a former ball player like Carl Crawford with Meg or it might be a drug dealer. It might be somebody else. They're going to say, yo, yo, I'm going to finance this shit. Here's 100000 or I'm going to spend 100000 on studio, this and third, blah, blah, blah. And that person now becomes really your label. You get what I mean? Like, you don't know it's your label because it, you, you, it's independent at that point. But later on, when you want to sign to the label, when Capital, Interscope, or uh, Atlantic come through, that, that hood nigga or that basketball player or whoever who gave you that money that was financing it, they're tied to you. So you could still kind of work it through. But, but um, you know, again, you get to realize a label is just a financier. And obviously they have, uh, they could make a couple things happen, but if you could get popping on your own and nobody gave you money before, you could sign some of the best deals because you could walk into some of these buildings and tell them to eat dick when they don't come with the deal you want. And what, what deal would you want? Listen, you want to treat it like the iTunes. This would be the best deal possible. Treat it like the iTunes Apple store, my nigga. Feel me? You get, the label gets a 30% fee off distribution, right? And they also, the, and they also give you a couple million dollars um, in advance to make the album. So you're spending their money to make the albums, travel, this and third. 
they only recoup or maybe sometimes the sliding scale. Maybe sometimes it, it'll be like 50-50 um, on the distribution scale until you recoup. Then it goes to like 70-30 or 80-20. But at least you get to move around a little bit. Um, and again, that's if you are really like popping, right? So that would be like the really best case scenario. Also, you're not going to give up your publishing. Most most artists on most labels, the, the label is going to own part of the publishing, not the entire thing, right? That's, that's like back in the days when they used to take advantage of artists crazy. But yeah, when artists say they own their publishing, their own part of their publishing, right? You're usually it's written in contracts that any drops song that drops on, say it's whatever label, the label retains say 12% or maybe 25% of, of your portion of the masters, right? You own the rest of it. Or sometimes they split the masters 50, 50. And then later on, because if you become a big artist and say 20 years down the line, they want to buy your catalog. If somebody going to buy your catalog for $300 million, the label is getting $300 million as well. Or y'all going to split that $300 million because your cat, your master's is owned. So everything's a percentage. But if you could keep and retain the entire um, the entire rights um, or the entire, um, not only rights, but the, the entirety of the master's, the entirety of the, um, so the entirety of the master's, the entirety of the pub, right, which is usually split up a lot of times sometimes. Um, and literally it's just a, a straight distribution deal and you can use the overhead from the distribution deal to fund everything you got going on. And you could possibly put in the deal where you're basically like contracting and outsourcing certain shit that a label would do for you, like certain, um, admin stuff or certain motherfucking, um, 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 whether it's like playlisting, like, yes, you have to pay for playlists and all that type of shit for the label to use their contacts to get you on playlists, even though it makes you and the label money, you got to pay them. Uh, um, also basically everything just comes off of that money you're bringing in again. They won't give it to many people unless you're mad profitable already. So you got to be lit. You got to come in lit. Like for a regular artist coming in, when it comes to some label shit, they're expecting to lose money on you for the next two years the first two years at least so th that's why they give you a shitty deal like if, if i'm giving you money and i'm expecting for the first two years i'm gonna be losing money why the hell would i give you some great deal i'm gonna give you a shitty deal that for the first two years i am losing i'm i know i'm gonna lose for the first two years but if i'm gonna make money for the next three years or in perpetuity i'm gonna get a big bag and that's the gamble you get what i mean like if, you, if you're gonna if you go to a casino if you play the slots and the slots odds are like, you know, like 10%, you're, it's a reason why if you win, you get paid 10 times your money, right? So when someone doesn't have leverage or, or, or is not hot and you take a bet on them, that's why, you know, and these labels know they're going to lose for a few years. That's why they give you a shittier deal because they should get paid. They're playing slots, right? You come in with a 50-50 game basically saying, I'm already popping this and third. They're going to give you a better deal. Absolutely. fucking All right, people. Um, yeah. Let me get a fuck one out of here. Uh, I'll talk about Ice Spice's mom. Not in a bad way. Like uh, her mom actually did go viral recently. I'll talk about that tomorrow. Plus a bunch of other things. If I did miss any topics, please hit me up on the DMs. Let me know if there's anything else I could. Um, let me see. Anything else I could. Um. Uh, I, I could kind of address or talk about tomorrow, okay?